I had a dream over this past weekend um, where it started off where I was in my old church that I grew up in, and um, my youngest daughter asked me to go get something out of the car. I think it was like a Bible or one of her toys. At first, I was kind of like leaning on like, eh, I'm not going to do it, but I was like, all right, whatever, I'll go. So I was walking down the, um, the aisle back to the back where everybody meets up and stuff. And out of nowhere, my supervisor comes up to me and he's like, yeah, weddings can be really emotional. I'm like, Tear- get you teary eyed. I'm like trying to play it off like I'm a guy I'm like, no, I ain't going to cry at this. Like, what are you talking about? And so it kind of threw me off because it was like, I think I was just going to church. So like the, him mentioning a wedding kind of a little off. But um, so then then I remembered I was like, oh, shoot, I have to help out my. Um, my church with their live stream video so I go upstairs to where they have the, the balcony where they do the live stream stuff and as I'm walking down to see where the uh, the live stream is set up I see some guy already messing with it and he looks like one of the like a uh, type of person that you'd hear about like being saved and like I mean he's got tattoos and um, like he was going to give a confession about how he had um, made a change in his life and i look over to my wife like uh what's going on and she's like i I have no idea so i walked up after he had walked walked past me i walked up to that area and as i'm walking up it's like the balcony was longer than what it normally is at our church and when i get up there all of a sudden instead of being on the balcony we were down on the bottom floor and um so i seen the guy that i usually do the stuff with and he's like oh yeah um, you could go grab a laptop and go get set up I'm like okay all right um so i start oh, to do, do i i uh start to go set that up and um his son's like oh wait you can't do that and and because he helps out with uh the presentation or whatever on the tv screens and he um he's like oh wait no chris you're good you just have to sign in on this laptop and you'll be good all set but this other kid he can't use it because i had some kid apparently following me wanting to join or take over too and kind of threw me off i was like all right uh, he's not with me but whatever um and after that i started getting set up and um then the sermon started going and i was like a little embarrassed because i'm like in the middle of trying to get stuff set up and like um not trying to be a distraction by still sitting on the laptop so i stand up turn around and the pastor made a comment about um if you want to get um something along the lines of like getting uh Uh, trying to think oh shoot sorry (laughs) um getting getting a blessing or something come down to the front of the stage and like give uh donations like hey get blessings by giving donations come up to the stage and it kind of threw me off but i seen people walking up to the front of the stage and i kind of looked at the people next to me and i'm like is this for real like people are gonna pay for blessings and stuff and I noticed off to the side of the stage, there was like a big um, uh, stand, like they were trying to sell t-shirts and marketing, all this other stuff. And it just really put me off. Like this doesn't seem right. Like this shouldn't be going on in the church or whatever. Um, so like I started to leave and um, I seen one, uh, one of the families as I was walking out, the uh, the mother, she looked from like she looked like she was she went to that church, but she, I I know it was somebody that I watched a show from recently, so um, so the face was somebody from TV, but um, uh, but yeah, we kind of had the conversation of how it was so off putting that what the church was doing, like how they were focusing on money and like trying to sell blessings or whatever, and. Uh, I told her how upset I was and how it almost like 
how I almost felt like I was almost like going to tear up and stuff that it was like that off putting. But, um, and yeah, and that's pretty much it. So. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot going on. So you were at church and it ended up being a wedding and you had to go out to your car to get something right for your daughter. Yeah. So it was, it was, yeah, my daughter wanted me to get something out of my car and, but the, um, the whole wedding thing, it was just my supervisor. It just patted me on the back and like, yeah, weddings can be emotional, but like, I think it was still like just a regular sermon, but for some reason why that threw me off. And, um, I talked to my wife about that part in particular, how like, um, that supervisor, I kind of felt like was like a father figure at my mm -hmm. workplace. And so we kind of came up with the idea that maybe like how Jesus and the church, that's like his bride and stuff. So it seems like there's a lot of things distracting you at this church service. Yeah. You never made it yeah. to the car. Did you? No, I didn't. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Neil. Yeah. I was going to say this, uh, this whole thing is one giant distraction and it's kind of a, uh, blight on the church it's, it's not a good commentary on the church obviously so you're um you're there with your family your daughter and your wife um yeah the whole thing that it's a it's a wedding that the supervisor is somebody you admire is that true is that yeah you see him yeah. as a, kind of a father figure yeah mm -hmm. I, I agree with the, him as being a kind of a jesus figure that you know, the wedding at Canaan, Canaan <clears throat> was, uh, was an emotional event. Um, that was the first place that Jesus did his miracles, you know, which was, I always liked that story because mostly because of Mary, because it's a great commentary on what we need to do. And he's, he goes back <clears throat> to change the water into wine and, and he says, pour the water into here and then give it to the steward to taste. And the guys who are holding the water and put it in, it's like, do we do that? And Mary's standing there. She says, do whatever he tells you to do, which is like the whole gospel in, in one sentence. You know, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. It's pretty easy. And, you know, and he turns out that the wine that comes out is just the best in the world. So you're distracted. You never make it to the car to get the Bible or whatever toy it is for your daughter. And so she's not going to she's going to go through the whole service wondering where it is. <clears throat> just kidding. Um, so you go up to help out with the job that you normally do, the uh, help with the live stream. And, but somebody's already there doing it for you. Who's probably somebody new to the church. He said he is a tattooed dude who is probably going to give his testimony about how he was the worst person in the world. And now he's got these tattoos to prove it. And he's, you know, he's found Jesus and everything's wonderful. That kind yeah. of like Bible. Yeah. 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 So, and this guy has nothing to do with the church. He's doing your job for you which is kind of off-putting. So that's the second off-putting thing that you've got. And <clears throat> so you go up to the balcony. It, it feels like you're rising in the church, but you end up on the first floor. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's almost like you, there's, you can't get anywhere in this church. It's like you, you think you're going up, but you're still down. Um, and so you finally find the guy who you usually do the stuff with, do your live streaming thing with, and he says, go get a laptop. You can do it now. Yeah. Yep. And then he's, um, but you, what did I write? You can't, somehow he stops you and says you can't do it because you don't have the yeah his, his, sign or something. His son, I don't think recognized that it was me. And so he kind of like tried to stop me at first, like, Hey, yeah. you're not allowed to do this. And Oh, Hey, yeah, it's you. So, so this church is so big that people don't really recognize you. It's not, it's a community, but it's so big that you're either your service is not valued or they just don't know you because they're so big and they have people who are in charge of things that shouldn't be there. And it's just kind of disorganized. It, it seems like it's just a place of chaos, although it's not chaos. It's just not as organized as you'd like it to be. It, it, it seems like you don't feel like you're part of this community, even though you're part of this community. Yeah, and so the pastor gets up and starts a sermon. Um, it's not a wedding, as you, as your supervisor had told you. Maybe it should have been a wedding, as the supervisor told you, because you trust him and 
he probably was more truthful than the pastor who's standing there, who now says, if you want to get blessed, come down and give us some money and we'll bless you for it. You know, it's the whole, <clears throat> and then you see the big stand of marketing, the merchandise counter, the yeah. coffee shop and everything else that's not supposed to be sold in churches. And I, I, I see this part as, you know, Jesus looking at it and, and as he would the money changers tables in the temple and he's about to tip them over. And I think with this church, whoever, do you recognize the church that this was in? Is this the one you go to in this dream? I think we lost you, Chris. Chris, can you hear us? I don't think we can. Anyway, we'll keep going. Um, anyway, it seems like it's the, you know, Jesus is about to bring, this is the, the step before Jesus turns over all the tables. And um, so you start to leave and you see another TV, a church, church TV personality, and you're talking to her about how off-putting the whole service was. And you told her, even though you told your supervisor at the beginning that the sermon, uh, the wedding wouldn't make you cry, what happened in this service up to this point is making you cry, almost to the point of crying. And so it's not the emotion of the wedding and the service that that brings an emotion to you. It's really the fact that this church is being used, not the way it's, but this is not the church Jesus wanted to do it. And I think it just shows you have a heart for God and what's important to him. And what's going on in this church is just a show. It's it's not church. This is just, this is a show for money. And nobody in there values what you're doing. Um, to me, it's, it's, I don't know how, what, the church that you're going to now is anything like this, but it seems like it's kind of pointing to maybe you should move on to a different church. I don't know if that's true. If you feel that way in the place that you are now, maybe it's time to start looking for another place. And I think it's a it's an indictment of, to churchdom as a whole that this is what we've become, that we've become a church that's more interested in collecting money and, and putting on the show than they are in actually spreading the gospel and you know, bringing people to Christ.